Hi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a basic website using XHTML and Dreamweaver CS6, basically with a uh, basic left navigation. I will follow this up with a second video that will show you how to do basically the same thing, but rather than using XHTML, we'll show you how to create a site with the top navigation using HTML5. So let's get going. So the first thing I do when it opens up is I want to create a new site. And so you can do that over here, or I just have a habit of always going up to site, new site. And you want to name it something meaningful, so I'm going to call it left navigation demo. And then a very important thing is you have to decide where you want to keep the files on your website. I tend to always keep them in a file called websites, but for this demo I'm just going to create a file called left navigation demo and I always try to make the name of my folders all lowercase and avoid spaces or strange symbols and I often will while I'm doing this create a folder within this one for images and one for CSS so once that looks good I'm going to hit choose I'm going to double check that that looks right it does so then I'm gonna hit server and you had a you need to hit this little plus sign so now I type in your a and for your a I would put in SFTP type in your a dot UC Denver dot edu my your a password I put the password in and I hit test and I was successful. I'm going to hit save and save. I'm going to hit OK. So just like that I have a folder on my desktop where I'm going to store all my files that I can then use this site definition that I just created to connect to the, with the URA server. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit create new HTML. So in this case I'm just using the XHTML transitional doc type and that's fine. You'll notice in Dreamweaver you can have a design view, split view, or code view. I do most of my work in split view. You can change it under view, split vertically if you'd rather it this way. I tend to, it's taken some getting used to um, because previous versions you weren't able to split it this way, but this is actually the way I like to do it the most. And I highly recommend working in split view because you get used to seeing the code as you write it in the right in the design view. So, so the first thing you want to do is give this a title. I'm going to call this Fun with Dreamweaver. And click over here in the right. You notice that when I do that, I can see over here where it was done. And notice up in the tab, it also tells me that I'm working with XHTML. So I'm going to do a file save as so that right when I start, and I'm going to make sure I save it in my left navigation folder. And I always call my first file index.html. And hit save. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a div, a container to put everything in. So I'm going to go to Insert, Layout Objects, Div. I'm going to do this as ID because I'm only going to use this once per page. Type in container and there it is. So in this case I'm going to delete this text here, but i got to make sure my cursor is still in between here. And I'm just going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to create one called Banner. And this is kind of for what goes across the top. And you can name these things anything that makes sense to you. And so as you start working down here, you can always down here in Split View, apply source formatting, and it can clean up your code a little. And you'll notice that if you pull this over a little, you can start seeing that within the div container, you have this other div called Banner. And so what some people like to do is even add little bits of code to help them understand where this what this is so for instance I can add this comment um, in the banner div I can do the same thing here and I can actually just type this in and some people find this helpful especially when your site gets big to understand when you later see this div well what does that actually um, correspond to and in this case it is the end of the container div right makes sense. Okay, so now I could keep going down and doing the insert layout objects div tag, but I find 
once I get in a groove, it's easier just to type right in here. So I'm going to hit return. I'm going to type in div, div id equals. I'm going to call this left nav. And then I'm going to keep going down. Now I'm going to create a new one. Once again, name it something that makes sense to you. I'm going to create one more, and this one is going to be for the footer. Okay, so now that I have this basic format set up, now what I like to do is I like to jump right in and I started playing CSS, so I start seeing everything take shape. I'm going to actually change this and just call this banner, and so it's just a real basic guidelines for me to know what I'm working on. So now I'm going to do a file save. So once it's been saved, so now to add CSS, what I like to do is I go to Windows and I go to CSS styles, and you can always make this bigger. And I click over here on the left, and when I'm clicking in the banner, I'll look down here that I can see container and banner. Why well, I actually want to add a style to the container. So I'm going to click on that. You can see it highlighted. I'm going to click this plus sign over here. So it's ID, container, that looks good. So this is one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a style sheet rather than using this document only because then I just have one place to update my CSS. And this is really their preferable way to do it. And I'm just going to call this master. CSS. I'm going to save it in my CSS file. Okay, so now it pops up this. And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to click on box and I'm going to decide on width. I'm going to do 996. Um, there's a lot of what you can do a fixed width or you could do a page that will adjust with size. At least with educational websites, adjusting sites that adjust with size become difficult because it gets tricky to control the line length and line long line links can actually make it harder to read. Now there are things that you can do especially with um, this new version where you can create um, responsive design they talk about it and so rather than create like a mobile site you will have one site that adjusts to the screen essentially being used and so that's kind of beyond this initial video but that is something to think about. Right now we're just gonna um, start with you know, and it doesn't have to be 996. You can look up what are good widths. You know, if you want 990, if you want 800, play with it. You know, basically, if you're not going to have a lot of content, it doesn't make sense to have a huge site. Or it doesn't make sense to have a real big wide site. But right now, I'm just doing that. I'm going to click on background, and I'm just going to give it a color that's, let's do something not that obnoxious. Okay, we're going to hit apply and you'll see it take shape. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the banner and I'm going to actually do the same thing. So I make sure banner selected and I click the plus sign. And here it's saying, does it want to be this specific? Well, I'm not going to have another banner, so I'm going to hit less specific. I'm going to make sure it's in my master CSS. And this background, I'm just going to change to a different color. And right now I'm just doing this so you can start seeing these different colors. Okay, so now my left nav, I'm going to do the same thing. I click on it, make sure it's selected down here. I'm going to choose less specific, make sure it's master, hit OK. And here I'm going to do a couple things. So I'm going to do a background. I'm going to change it to another color. And these are just random colors right now. All right, and now I'm going to hit on box, and this is where I'm going to control the width. I'm going to start with 150. I might change my mind. I'm going to keep it as pixels, and I'm going to make it float left. Okay, there it goes. You notice how I'm going to hit OK. When I did this, that basically body count, body content just shifted up right next to it, which is good. So I'm going to click on body content. And in this case, you know, you can do the math. If you know that this is 996 and this was 150, then you can do some basic math to figure out what your body content needs to be. But basically, by having a float like this, it just takes care of itself for now. Though depending on when you start adding padding and margins later, that could change. Right now, we're going to hit, make sure body content selected, hit plus, 
hit less specific, make sure it's master CSS. Background, we're just going to add something else. For now, we're going to do float right and hit OK. You'll notice it's being a little weird over here, so we're going to click on body content. And that's right now, and now we're going to make sure it's selected. And here, rather than the plus sign, because it already exists, we're going to hit the edit rule. And put the width of 846. There you see it pop back, right? So now for footer, we're going to do one last thing for footer. Make sure that's there. And I don't remember if I created one from footer, so I can always check. You notice how I slick clicked over here on the CSS tab. And that's just, they're two different files. So this is my HTML file. This is my CSS. It's just showing it in a nice integrated way. But just like that, I checked my master CSS. I see that I did not add a footer. So what I'm going to do over here is rather than use the panel like I was, I'm just going to type in footer, curly brace, and I know I want background color. And you have to make sure that you have each one of these elements, any one of these that are off, and it won't work. And so that's what's great about Dreamweaver is that the color coding really helps you kind of do a quick scan. All right, so I'm going to save this, and I'm going to preview it. So it doesn't look like much right now, but you can see the basic skeleton, if you will, the structure of my site is coming together already. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to add some white space around the, all of it, and then I'm going to add some white space and padding in between. If I go back here, now when I know what I want to do is I can simply from my left navigation, I'm going to do padding, colon, 10 pixels. Padding colon 10 pixels. I want you to see what happens with the body content. Padding colon 10 pixels. All right. So what just happened there was because now the body content's wider than this space here, it got shifted down. And so I can quickly sit here and it's putting 10 pixels on base both sides. So let's see what happens if I subtract 20. You can take a look and you say, nope, still not there. So then, right, and there you start to see. And if you want to see this better, you'll notice that over here we can, we can zoom down and we could work with that view if you want. Now, I specifically, because we're recording this, I'm trying to restrict the size so it's not enormous. But you'll start seeing how this takes shape. So for the banner image, I'm not going to actually add any padding because I'm going to put an image in there actually to serve as my banner. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to type in some basic text. Home, I'm going to do a shift return or shift enter. Page 1, page 2, page 3. Now, these aren't really meaningful names of paging, and so you actually want to do a much better job than that. But as I'm building out my content, this is what, what I'll do sometimes. And I might even, you know, pop in here and start doing this. So you start to see what things look like. So you notice how this is overlapping a little? If I actually go down to my footer down here, and I'm in my CSS now, I'm going to type in clear, colon, both, semicolon. You'll see that that just dealt with that issue where it was floating across. Now we're not going to get into all the specifics on why some of this works and doesn't right now. Um, the goal really is to just kind of see real quick how you do a basic site. And so what I'm going to do is, and you could use another tool, but I'm going to open up Fireworks. And so in Fireworks I'm going to create a new document and I know in this case I'm going to make it 996 depending on um, how you were, if you added padding, you might make it smaller. I'm going to just hit OK. And for the height, I'm going to actually change my canvas size to, I wasn't paying attention when I did it before, 150. Okay. So I'm going to click on my text. So let's pretend that the name of the site is Having Fun with Dreamweaver. Choose a nice big font. And typically, your banner is the first thing people see. So I'm going to make this nice and big. And 
and just play around with it. And so I'm going to just So I'm just trying to play with my colors, make it nice and big. All right, let's pretend that this is what I wanted. So in this case, I'm going to um, actually play with my colors here. I'm going to actually change them. So the canvas I'm going to change here. I'm going to change this to white. You want to be very careful with contrast to make sure that things are still viewable. And you can always play around with, you know, finding that right color scheme, whatever that right color scheme might be. So, this black on this, it's probably not the best black font on a dark, so I could still, once again, play along with it. I could try to match it, and then go here and go with something lighter. Right? So, play around with it. Have fun. But now I'm going to do a file save as... And I'm going to go into my left navigation. I'm going to go to my images. I'm going to call this banner image. No spacing, all lowercase. And there's, if you know, finding right color schemes and things like that are hard for you, there's some great sites out there. Um, Adobe has one where they'll go through and they can give you color schemes to follow. So in this case, I'm going to go with my banner and I'm going to actually delete this color because it's not going to matter in, in just a minute. And so I'm going to go to source code HTML. I'm going to put my cursor right in that banner between those two tags. I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go insert image. Click in here, banner image. And click open. It's important to always have alternate text, sometimes even a long description. For instance, if you're going to do if you had a more complicated um, image you were trying to explain. So there, that's starting to look good. And so then, you know, down here, I can, this is where I can start playing with my color scheme and seeing what makes sense. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have no color for my footer. Let's try that. We're just going to delete that altogether. Okay. So that looks good. I'm going to go up to my banner, right? And so now you can see that the way it's set up, it's just, just empty with the CSS, which ultimately, that's fine. That is that is not a bad thing per se. I'm going to actually click on body. I'm going to click on this. And this, rather than using a div, I'm going to redefine the body tag. I want to be less specific. Nope, actually. I'm going to go that back and I'm just going to get rid of it because all I want is the body tag. I could also go down here and just say tag in it and find it that way. I'm going to hit OK. So this is where I'm going to go to the background. And I'm not going to actually add a black background for the entire site. There we go. And you can start seeing things taking shape. OK, so now for the container, I'm going to actually change this background color. So, to white because those initial colors were just things to start seeing everything take shape um, I'm gonna do right now the footer I'm gonna actually add a color after all and I'm gonna call it background color and I'm gonna actually do black and this is because for me the footer is often this thing at the bottom that's almost like the small print in a commercial and so I'm gonna actually put my mouse over here and do color because this is for the font and so then I'm going to do a just a light gray font and so we should see all of a sudden that footer coming back right so then we're gonna do font size We'll do 10 pixels, and you'll see it get nice and small. Okay, so now, once again, playing even more with this, I could just go ahead and make both of these um, the same color. So I could make my left navigation white and this background white if I wanted to. 
or I could play along with you know this color scheme some more if I wanted to so background color I could rather than this we'll see what it looks like I'm bringing my picker over to see if I got it and then I put the semicolon right and then I'm gonna click on this body content and I'm gonna actually get rid of that color okay so just like that I'm gonna do a file save and I could click live if I want to see what live looks like and this is basically Dreamweaver using its own kind of browser to show you I'm gonna undo that in this case I'm gonna preview it in Safari it's just saying do you want to save it again and just like that you can start seeing my site take shape so at the last couple of things I would do right away is I would decide what font do I want basically for my site and it could be that I know that I want a certain font on um, everywhere throughout the site and if that was the case under body I could just type in font family and this is where you choose and it gives you if you're not using this new thing called web fonts if you're using this old way of doing it it's basically what it does is it looks for these fonts on the user's machine if the person has Redonda it's going to show up for Redonda if they don't and it starts moving down so I'm going to do with the Arial got to make sure I have that closing semicolon there you see that change so the next thing I would play with is you know how to get things more aligned how to focus on adding headings carp and some other very important things so right now I'm going to do a save I'm going to type in home and I'm going to highlight that I'm going to make that an h1 and I can later use CSS to change the size of that. But now I'm going to save this, and now I'm going to do a file, save as, page one. And these would need to be named something more meaningful, as I said before. But for this example, just understanding the real basics is all you need. Now I'm going to do a save as, page two can't see what I'm doing off the screen here and I like to keep changing the heading and saving it right after because then later when I'm working on it I clearly know which one I'm working on and this is just a way of creating a basic site a home page if you will and then just doing a save as to create different versions of it because you definitely when you think about carp and principles of just being you know um, consistency and repetition how important they are so now that I have this I can highlight this and I can create my pages so that goes to my home page page one page two page three save so the next thing I do is I would repeat those steps to make sure they're working links on each page and then I try to preview it to make sure it's working the way I think it should okay notice everything works so right now I'm gonna upload this example to your array and show you how the next steps would be to add content to add images throughout and really focus on the principles of CARP, specifically trying to you know make sure that you focus on maintaining strong alignment, improving proximity where you can, and you know you alignment these top two, the home link and the heading could be aligned. So there are a lot of things you can do with CARP, but for now this is just a basic video on how to create a basic site in Dreamweaver. So now we're going to focus on uploading this to your A. First you want to make sure you have the files panel and I do so I'm going to click there and this gives me the nice big view I'm going to hit connect and now I can see my account here and in this case I'm going to click on my public HTML and I'm going to create a new folder by right clicking and say lefnav demo I always make sure that I put things in a folder there's no spaces, there's no caps, and just like that. So now I'm going to take these and highlight them, and I'm going to drag them to my site.
So I dragged them from my local to my remote and I made sure they were in my left nav folder. We'll try to do that once more. Oh, here, that's what I expected. Do you want to put independent files? I do. So we're going to let it do its thing. And now we're going to, to test that out. And I'd go to my site, but in this case, I put it in left nav demo, I think. And say, you got to get it just right. So how did I name that? Let's go look at it again. Left nav demo, no spaces. And there it is. So this is actually the same. The home page is the same as this page. Servers are just set by default to ignore that index or not require it when you just hit it this way. So just like that, we created a basic site. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the basic thing, recreating this just using HTML5, taking a few, really overall, just make a few things quicker. But for those of you who are interested in what HTML5 is and what it looks like, the next video will help you understand how you'll do that. Thanks.